everybody, I am Nico D. Today I'm back with another new single bird computer. It's the Raspberry Pi 4B. I have gotten this from one of my viewers, so thank you Jerry. All say thank you to Jerry in the comments down below. So I am very amazed by this board. I didn't expect it to be so great, but it is really awesome. So they've improved a lot of things. It now has truly gigabit ethernet. It now has USB 3. It now has got a sock that is a lot faster than the earlier sock. So this has got a quad core A72 at 1.5 GHz default. But compared to the A53s of the earlier versions, this performs so much better. So this one is clocked default at 1.5 GHz, but you can overclock it to 2 GHz. So that is really awesome. Compared to the Raspberry Pi 3B, this is twice the performance of this CPU. So that is really awesome. Also the RAM has improved a lot. This is DDR4 RAM at 2400 MHz, while this is DDR2 RAM at 400 MHz. So this is so much faster. I did not expect it to be so fast, it has got so much great improvements, but it also has got some problems. So for example, now it is powered with USB Type-C, that is an improvement, but they didn't improve the voltage regulation. So you still need a Raspberry Pi power adapter or an adapter that can give more than 5 volts, so 5.15 volts is what this needs. Just like the earlier versions, I've got 3 PSUs of more than 3 amps and only one of those 3 work well with this one. So when it is under volting, it is only clocked to 600 megahertz. So that makes it a bit unusable. So you do need a PSU that can give 5.15 volts or 5.2 volts. This is a problem with the Raspberry Pi. It is not a problem with the PSU. So they already have got Raspbian of course for it. Raspbian is ARM HF, so it is 32 bits. So it is Buster, Debian Buster. I don't have any scores of benchmarks of any other SBC in Buster ARM HF. So I also installed Ubuntu Bionic 64 bits on it and I've done some benchmarks with that and I'm just amazed by the performance. It can keep up with the NanoPi M4 while this has got two cores less but the RAM is faster and the cores really really perform great. This has got great single core performance but it also has got great multi-core performance. One other problem that this has, it does need a good heatsink and a fan. If you don't use a fan with it or a big heatsink, then it will throttle constantly and it will be slow. When it is throttling, it's only at one gigahertz. So we don't want that. We want the full performance of this board. I use my Tinkerboard heatsink on it with a five volt fan on it. And this works great. I even don't have to put my 5 volt fan in the 5 volts but in the 3 volts. So it doesn't make too much noise. And even then it doesn't go too high in temperatures. So it is okay with the temperatures but you do need to cool it. But it is coolable. So first let's go over the specs. I'll show you some of the software. I will show you how to install hardware acceleration for Chromium. And I'll show you some benchmarks. So here we go! So first the specs. So first we see the 40 pin GPIO header. So this is Raspberry Pi compatible of course, since it is a Raspberry Pi. So then we've got the Gigabit Ethernet port. This is now full Gigabit Ethernet. Finally we've got full Gigabit Ethernet. This is not shared over USB ports or so. So this is great. Then we have got two USB 3 ports. That's awesome also. They also work at full USB 3 speed, so it is awesome. Then the two USB 2 ports. Then we see the 3.5mm audio jack, which also can be used for analog video. Then the MIPI CSI connector, so for the camera. Then the dual micro HDMI ports, so you can connect two HDMI displays to this Raspberry Pi. This is really great. I'll have to check for a second cable because I only have got one with micro HDMI. 
Then we see the USB Type-C port for power. This is also an improvement, but again they had to improve the voltage regulation of the Pi itself also. The MIPI DSi, so for a display also, and the SD card reader. The SD card reader also has improved, it's now at double the speed of the earlier versions, but it's still rather slow. And as last the Wi-Fi, 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz Wi-Fi. The SOC is the Broadcom BCM2711B0. This is a quad core A72. It is clocked at 1.5 GHz defaults, but as I already said, it can be clocked up to 2 GHz. The GPU is the Video Core 6 at 500 MHz defaults, but it can be clocked to more than 600 MHz. So this is also a big step up. I do wonder where the Video Core 5 went. The biggest step up is of course the RAM. It is LPDDR4 2400 MHz. So this is really awesome. There is a model of 1 GB, there's one of 2 GB or one of 4 GB. I've got the 4 GB model. Compared to the NanoPi M4 for example, the NanoPi M4 has got DDR3 1866 MHz. So the Raspberry Pi outclasses it in this. And this also makes a big difference in performance. Here I am in Raspbian. So to enable hardware acceleration for Chromium, we type in this in Google. And the first one here is the one we need. So you copy everything here. You create a file chromium-mod.sh. Then you make that file executable. And then you execute the file. But be sure to close Chromium before doing this. With this Chromium can only play up to 1080p videos, but it is a lot more watchable than without it. But it isn't perfect, there are some dropped frames, but I can't see it. In 720p it's even better. This is really awesome to see in Raspbian, so I've got 3.4 GB of RAM, 500 MB is reserved for the GPU, awesome to see 4 GB in Raspbian. Now let's do a single core 7-zip benchmark to measure the clock speed. As you see it's 1500 MHz. And our 7-zip score is around 2000. Now let's overclock to 2 GHz. So for that I use Genie. I open Genie, sudo Genie. It must be sudo or else you cannot open the config.txt file. So you open the config.txt file, it's already open here. And here you add arm frequency 2000 over voltage of 4. It is needed to overvolt. You can also overclock the GPU here to 600 MHz. This is not necessary if you don't need a higher GPU clock, but this can also improve CPU demanding tasks, but just a little bit. Now save it and reboot. And now let's do the same test again. And as you see, now it is clocked to 2 GHz. And our score has improved a lot. Now the Blender results in Raspbian. So with the default clock, no fan, but with the Tinker heatsink, it was 1 hour 57 minutes and 23 seconds. So it was throttling to 1 GHz constantly. With the 3 volt fan it didn't throttle, so it was 1 hour 29 minutes and 7 seconds. Then I overclocked it to 1.75 GHz. The result was 1 hour 19 minutes, so that's 10 minutes improvement. Then I clocked it to 1.85 GHz because I didn't know I could clock it to 2 GHz. That time was 1 hour 14 minutes, that's also again a big improvement. And then to 2 GHz and the end time of that was 1 hour and 10 minutes. 
so that's 20 minutes faster than the default clock. But you do need to use a 3 volt fan. And then I also overclocked the GPU to 600 MHz and that was a marginal difference of 1 minute. These are really crazy times for a quad core SBC. Then the results of the 64 bit Ubuntu. So this Ubuntu isn't ready yet. You can only use 1 GB of RAM. It takes a long time to boot. There are some problems with it, but I could do my benchmarks with it and I'm so amazed by it. So the default clock was 1 hour 21 minutes and 5 seconds. So this is 10 minutes faster than in Raspbian at 1.75 GHz. It was 1 hour 8 minutes. So this is already faster than the fastest one of Raspbian. And then at 2 GHz we got the time of 1 hour and 12 seconds. This is an awesome time. Now let's compare this with other SBCs. Here we see what a beast the Raspberry Pi 4 is at 2 GHz. So it is at third place behind the Kadas Fib 3 what's a monster and the Oldroid N2. But it is in front of the NanoPi M4 which is a 6 core SBC but it only has got 2 high performance cores while the Raspberry Pi has got 4 of them. Also the RAM of the Raspberry Pi is faster and that also helps in Blender. So compared to the Oldroid C2 it's twice as fast compared to the ROC64 it's 3 times faster compared to the old Raspberry Pi 3B Plus it is 5 times faster. So it is really amazing to see this of a Raspberry Pi. I can't believe it. I really can't believe it how this can be so good. But I did other benchmarks too and those also gave this picture. Now the temperatures, I had heard a lot of bad things about it but it isn't as bad as I thought. So without a fan but with the big Tinker heatsink it is 58 degrees Celsius in idle, this is very high and maxed out it goes to 83 degrees Celsius but it is throttling to 1000 megahertz. It takes 3 minutes before it reaches the throttle temperature. So you can use it without a fan but it will get very hot. So with the 3 volt fan in idle the temperature is 37 degrees Celsius and maxed out it is only 50 degrees Celsius. This is at 1.5 gigahertz. So at 1.75 gigahertz it reaches 55 maxed out and at 1.85 it is 57 degrees Celsius and at 2 gigahertz it maxed out at 60 degrees Celsius. So it isn't that bad but you need to use a fan. I didn't do the 5 volt fan tests because a 3 volt fan is more than sufficient. Now we've heard all the good things about it, now something it isn't good at. So the power consumption is rather high. Default idle without Wi-Fi without the fan is 0.64 amps. This is very high. With the Wi-Fi on it is 0.7 amps. So this is 3 times as much as the Kadas Fim 3. Default clock maxed out it is 1.3 amps. So that's as much as the Kadas Fim 3 while the Kadas Fim 3 is a lot more powerful. But when it's clocked at 2 GHz the idle consumption is 0.8 amps. And maxed out it goes to 1.85 amps but with the fan it is 2 amps. One more thing the governor of the Raspberry Pi is again lying about the clock speeds. So to see the real clock speeds you type in this in the terminal and that gives you the real clock speeds that the Raspberry Pi is on. Don't believe the frequency governor it's being misled by the Raspberry Pi team. So you don't see it when it is throttling only with this you can see when it is throttling. So now my conclusion, I must say I'm baffled by this board, I did not expect this. This really has got such a performance, it is unmatched by any other quad core SBC. Four of these A72 cores really pack a punch. An A72 core always performs a lot better than any A53 core at the same clock speed. But this one can be clocked to 2 GHz, so it really is unmatched by anything else. The RAM speed is also awesome. It's awesome to have a 4 GB Raspberry Pi. You really can use it as a desktop computer. The software for now isn't ready yet. There's a lot of things that need to be worked on. So the drivers for the GPU for example 
Also RetroPy doesn't work yet for it. So a lot of work needs to be done, but we know this will happen. The community of Raspberry Pi is big enough for this to make it happen. There are some problems with it. The under voltage is still there when you are using a normal PSU. So you've got to use a Raspberry Pi PSU or a PSU that has a little higher voltage. The temperatures are okay if you use a fan for it, but you must use a fan and a heatsink for this board. Because with such a performance you also get a lot of heat and also a high power consumption. I will make a lot more videos about this board. When Ubuntu 64-bit is ready I will make a video about that of course. I hope Salvador will quickly get one in his hands, then he can port some games to this. This will be very capable to play awesome games. Again thank you to Jerry for giving me the opportunity to review this. I would not have bought it otherwise. I didn't need it for anything else than make a review video for it. But now I will use it a lot. This one will be used as a desktop replacement. I will get a second micro HDMI cable for it so I can dual screen with it. So that's my conclusion. I hope you all like my video. Thank you all for watching. See you all later. Bye.